Have you ever found it difficult to let go of a deep hurt? Is it sometimes easier to ask for forgiveness than to offer it? Is there still someone in your life that you're having difficulty forgiving? Hey everybody, this is Steve, and Lent begins with forgiveness. In this week's Gospel, Jesus reminds us that the Father won't forgive us of our sins unless we first forgive others for their sins. And in this week's epistle, Paul reminds the Romans that salvation is near and that we have to take care not to make others stumble on their journey. Links, as always, are down in the doobly-doo. And remember to check out the intro videos we made for both Matthew's Gospel account and Paul's epistle to help you better understand the readings. After a few weeks of preparation, we find ourselves getting ready for the last Sunday before the start of Great Lent. We're going to hear this week's readings during the Divine Liturgy on Forgiveness Sunday, and the day after will be Clean Monday, the start of Great Lent. Lent will actually begin on Sunday evening with Forgiveness Vespers, when everyone in the community will have a chance to ask forgiveness of each other, to start the journey to Pascha with humility, and reconciliation, united on the path to the Lord's resurrection and our salvation. This week's Gospel passage seems perfect for the lead-up to Great Lent. Jesus speaks to us about prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, the three practices that are the foundation, not just of Lent, but our ascetic struggle throughout the year. Our passage picks up right after the end of the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus reminds us that God will forgive us as we forgiven others. And then the passage continues with advice about fasting and where to store up our treasure. That last part is really interesting because it's a shift in emphasis. Jesus stops speaking about practices and starts to speak of salvation sort of in a geographic sense, that we need to lay up our treasure, not in a place of corruption, but in God's kingdom. Paul has something similar in mind in this week's epistle, where he speaks of salvation not as a thing we acquire, but in a mystical sense, as a place we need to approach. Brethren, salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. It's a reminder to us that the kingdom is our final destination. And to get to any destination, you have to go on a journey. Each of us is on a spiritual journey, working our way nearer and nearer to God, to His kingdom. And this journey is exactly what's waiting for us during Great Lent, the fasting and almsgiving Jesus talks about in the Gospel reading, the self-control and peacemaking that Paul is describing in his epistle, the struggles that will form us, little by little, day after day, into Christians, the steps, both great and small, that will lead us to salvation and God's kingdom. And yet, of all these steps, perhaps none is quite so difficult as the challenge we receive right at the start of the Gospel passage. Remember, the reading in Matthew starts right after the Lord's Prayer and tells us to forgive the sins that we have suffered. Jesus says to forgive, not merely minor things, but everything. To set aside what we think people owe us, to release the people in our lives rather than hold them back with judgment and condemnation. And Jesus tells us that if we don't do this, we won't be forgiven. We can pray and fast and give alms and do all kinds of wonderful things ourselves, but that won't matter if we don't forgive others. Because just like last week, in episode 21, Jesus isn't making judgment and salvation about us. He's framing it as the relationship between us and our neighbors. At the very end of this week's epistle, Paul, who has spent paragraph upon paragraph raising the bar for our own conduct, suddenly softens when he talks about our neighbor. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. The word Paul uses here to mean fall is another word for sin. It's a trespass, a stumble, when we trip and fall. We all have our own struggles. We all have situations where we fall before the Lord, where we fail to live up to him as true children who reflect his mercy and His loving kindness. And we are all living and interacting with each other in a broken world, in a world where hurt and pain and suffering are part of the story already because of our many sins. As St. Paul says in another epistle, the wages of sin 
our death. So why add our condemnation and judgment to the already tragic consequences of sin? Instead, we're called to help others rise from their falls, to rejoice when someone turns toward God, not bring them down or trap them in shame or make their journey to salvation harder than it already is. Because who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls and he will be upheld, for God is able to make him stand." God doesn't want any of us to stumble. He wants all of us to stand. He wants us all to be free to walk the path of righteousness and enter into salvation and eternal life. And we know what we need to do to make that happen. We know the ascetic struggle that's part of our everyday Christian lives, and it's only going to get more intense during Great Lent. But we also know that we can do all the right things and yet find ourselves no nearer to salvation. Like the older brother in the parable of the prodigal son, which we explored in episode 20. If we think we are doing all the right stuff but cannot permit those who have sinned against us to return and be forgiven, then we too will find ourselves standing outside of the feast, outside of the salvation God wants so desperately to grant to us. To deny another person forgiveness is to deny that we are children of God, called to be like our Father in heaven. To deny another person forgiveness is to choose our anger or our pain over our calling to participate in the reconciliation of all through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To deny another person forgiveness is to lock ourselves out of God's kingdom. So, on Sunday evening, you should stick around for Forgiveness Vespers and really experience what Forgiveness Sunday is all about. You'll get in a circle and ask each and every person to forgive you, to set aside your debts and trespasses and welcome you back into their hearts. And perhaps even more importantly, you'll be asked to forgive each and every person in the community. Your parents, your children, your siblings, your friends, your priest, that guy at coffee hour who's super annoying. And that is the real test for us on Forgiveness Sunday. We have hope that God will forgive us. I mean, the Son of God died for us despite our many sins and shortcomings. And we have hope that our brothers and sisters in Christ will forgive us, as is natural for a Christian. But what will we do when we're face to face with someone who's hurt us, someone who's deeply wounded us, someone who's brought incredible darkness into our lives? Will we forgive as God forgives? Or will we cause our brothers and sisters to stumble on the path to salvation? We've covered a lot of ground today, and to help work through what this all means for each of us, we'll end, as we always do on Live the Word, with three questions. First, how do you keep your eyes focused on your own spiritual journey? How do you avoid falling into judgment or condemnation of others? As you reflect on your life, can you point to any situations when it's hardest for you? Times you're especially tempted to look upon others with judgment rather than forgiveness. Second, do you find that Lent or other periods of preparation make the struggle to forgive any easier? After a few weeks of attending more church services, of fasting more, and praying more, do you notice something different in your heart? Maybe reading scripture the past few months with us has helped. Just like some situations might make forgiveness more difficult, do you find others make it, if not easy, at least easier. Third, is there anyone in your life that you've had trouble forgiving? Have you held onto any old hurts or wounds and allowed that damage to continue to affect your relationship with God and neighbor? If you have, maybe you can start by moving that person up to the very top of your prayer list and begin to reconcile by standing side by side in the presence of God. We'll be back with a new episode on Monday. And my buddy Christian will have a short response video up on Thursday as he wrestles with these questions. I hope you'll read the gospel and epistle passages we cover today. And whether it's with family or friends or a Bible study group, I hope you'll talk about what we've covered and wrestle with what God has for you in your life. Most importantly, I hope you'll celebrate with us this Sunday and every Sunday to hear the beautiful scripture readings proclaimed during the Divine Liturgy and to learn how you can live the Word. Thanks for watching. You can click on our logo to subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications by clicking the little bell so you never miss a video. You can find lots more from us, including ways to donate at our website, 
y2am.org.